Hello and welcome to Mike's Garage. If you've already subscribed to our channel, thank you very much. If you haven't, please do. And when you do, be sure and tap on the notification bell so you'll be notified every time we put up a new video. We've got quite a few of them out now too, like 230 some, I think. That's quite a few. So hopefully you can find the things you're looking for in there. And all that good stuff. I'd like to also thank people that have been tapping on the like button and little things like that. Now, one of the things I want to say more than anything today is, in our recent videos, I've been working on a 65 pan head, which has been a pretty interesting bike because I keep finding things in it that need to be corrected. And we do that, but every time we do it, we have to order something. So right now I'm waiting for parts to come in with a little luck. They'll be in Tuesday. There's some new stuff that I can show that we're doing. Actually, it's old stuff that we're doing, but I'd like to show it anyway. So we will show that. But we're not putting it on the back burner. It's just waiting for parts, and they should be in Tuesday. And we'll probably do a video Tuesday or Wednesday on that, and we'll get that going. It'll be cool. So in the meantime, I'm doing, I'm still, as per the usual, catching up with all the things I promised. One of the things I promised was due, I think, last Christmas was a back wheel for uh, <laughs> cameraman Mike's Dyna, which I'm working on right now. But Mike has a tendency to take advantage of things. It's like, as long as we got to take the wheel off, maybe I'll polish the primary. Well, as long as the primary is off, will I have a look at the clutch and a few other things? And so I saw it as an opportunity to say, okay, we're working on this late model beast. There's a few people out there that would like to see some of this. So I thought I'd take advantage of it. And we do a couple videos. Uh, when we get done with the clutch and the primary cover back on, well, then we'll mount the wheel. In a, a couple, several videos ago, oh, oh, well, <laughs> back, I showed this bike and I was showing that we were fitting it up for a new wheel. Well, I did build that wheel. It has the proper offset. We haven't put it on the bike yet. So when we get that clutch all done, we'll get that wheel on too. And that is a pretty wheel. I laced it up with a real nice rim and polished stainless spokes. And there was no specification for the offset for the wheel we were using. So we dreamed it up out of our heads and well, we'll see what it looks like. Here's open. Anyway, let's get back to the, the issue at hand here. Uh, this is Cameraman Mike's 2008 Dyna. Nice motorcycle, 96 incher with a six speed. What's not to like? It's fast and it's smooth and it's pretty cool. I like it. I've ridden it on a couple of occasions and it's, uh, there's some good cheap thrills in it. Anyway, so, since the primary cover is off and he worked his butt off polishing it and polishing it, it's really nice. I wanted to just adjust the clutch and so that's what I'm going to do. Um, let's just get right into it. I thought it would be kind of neat to do with the primary cover off, which it doesn't need to be to, to adjust the clutch. But since it is off, it does expose everything and it makes it kind of nice to look at so that you get a bit of an understanding of what you're doing. So right up here, this is the cable adjuster. And you have to remember that's all it is, is a cable adjuster. This rubber cover is over that adjuster. I already slid it up here. And that rubber cover is really neat. It always traps a lot of water in here so this whole thing can rust. I'm a big believer in that. Okay, so we'll back off the lock nut. And as soon as we get that backed off, then we'll see what else we can do here. Well, that's nice. It's not very rusty. It's working pretty well. So the cable just gets longer and longer. No, not longer and longer. It's actually getting shorter and shorter, I guess. Which makes this whole thing very loose. Which is what we're going for. Now the factory cable I think has 
One nut is a half inch, and the other one takes a 9 16 wrench. Uh, this particular one, I think, is an aftermarket piece, and two half inch wrenches do the job. And so we're just shortening up the, uh, we're actually shortening the cable sleeve by closing up this adjuster. Now, the reason for doing it all in a specific order is so that the geometry is right at each juncture, at each place. In other words, we're going to take this all the way loose and we're going to treat the cable and the lever to some lubricant and stuff. Then we'll get on with the adjustment, but right now we've got this pretty well backed off. Oh yeah. That's backed off a lot. Now, I want it backed off a lot because I'm going to take it apart. Now, if you look in your service manual, service manual clearly states that this stuff should all be lubed on a regular occasion, and most of it never gets lubed by anyone. I'm not accusing anyone. Just saying. There is a little snap ring here. <laughs> yeah, I can't see it, so maybe I can get this thing up here and get a little light up there for a minute. No, that's not doing it either. Oh, there we go. There we go. Got to get one of these little points in each one of these little eyes. Okay. I got it. It did not spring across the garage. But there is that snap ring. You can even show it. It's a little beast if you want to show that, Mark. Ta-da! It's just really hard sometimes to get your eyes to focus on it. Sometimes it's because you have not enough light and sometimes it's because you have too much. But it's off. Anyway, so we'll take the pin out now. This is the pin. The pin came out. And we'll take this uh, cable loose. And there is the lever. Now I'm going to take that lever. I'm going to take the nylon pin out of it. That's going to be just like that. And I'm going to set that down there, and I'm going to get down on this end here. Should probably have gotten myself a step stool or something here, which I didn't. Ah, I have one. That's pretty cool. This is a very important step. I don't know anybody who does it. So again, I'm not accusing anyone. What I'm going to do is this lubricant, I picked this one because it has Teflon suspended in it. And I run it down the cable. And when I put a new cable on, what I generally do is I hang the cable up overnight and I run this stuff down until it, until it goes all the way through. Well, we don't have that luxury here for this particular day. But what happens is 
if over a period of time, every time I adjust this thing, I put a little bit of that in there, eventually it will come all the way down the cable sleeve and the whole thing will be lubricated well and believe me, it will last, I'm going to say five times as long because I get miles and miles and miles out of the cables on my shovel head and that's really all I do to them. And you clean all these parts. Get all this stuff cleaned up here. And gee, while I was doing that, that stuff ran down a little further. So I'll put in a little more. You know, and then I go a little further and I'll do a little more and then pretty soon it gets down in there. Now it really sounds like I'm preaching and, and I know it, but this is, this is the place to be preaching. This is the time to be preaching is, is when we're talking about things like cables. There's nothing like being in the middle of nowhere with a broken cable. I've done that. It's amazing what you can use for a cable when you have to. I think one of the funniest ones was I was riding my shovel head and this kid that worked for me was riding a, a new heritage. And I broke my throttle cable. Of course, I only had one. I didn't have two on it. So I had to make one out of one of his cables because he had two and I knew he only needed one. So that's how I did that one. Anyway, so we'll take this lever and clean it up a bit. Wow, this is nasty. Um, I'm going to turn that. It is off. Yeah, that would do it, I guess. You know what I need is an air hose. That's what I really need. Ah, oh, we have an air hose. Yeah, look at something else while I hook up the air. Yeah, that worked. That's pretty nice. And I like that loop they put in the kickstand for me to put the air hose. Pretty neat. Okay. So now, I'm going to lube that up one more time. Like I said, the more I put in there, the further it runs down the housing. And I'll get some grease here. Then I'll put it on both sides of this clevis here so it can slide in there. The same thing with this pin. I'm going to lube it up real nice, a little grease. All this is is bearing grease. Just good bearing grease. And I'll put that in there. And I'll put that in there. My goodness. Ain't that cool. So then, we'll take and we'll take some of my finger again. And we're going to put some on here. We'll put some on here. Okay. And then we have this big pin. We're going to put some on there. Now, a lot of people think because this is traveling on a piece of nylon, it doesn't need any grease. Well, let me tell you, this stuff will last way longer if it's lubed well. All of it. Okay, we'll slide that in there. Get that cable into there and we'll take this pin and push it into there and there it is. Okay. Okay, now I think what we'll do 
is we'll take this little snap ring, which was really being kind of nasty to me, and we'll explain to it that it doesn't get to do that this time. It's going to go right back in. Excuse me. Hmm. Ain't that special. All right. Okay, now everything is nice and smooth. If all this stuff is maintained, it makes for a much, much easier operating clutch. I see the little clip has gone off of this. There's an anti-rattle clip on there. It's supposed to be on there, which I'll probably put on later. I think I have some back in the parts room. Okay. Now that we've done that, we can see how, how everything is pretty... Uh, pretty out of adjustment. Okay, this is the lock nut. Okay. Now this is the adjusting screw. I took the lock nut and backed it off. And now Okay, we'll reach it, I mean, just turn it down until we've tightened it. And it's just a light fit there. Okay, then about half a turn, we'll back it off. Eh, not quite. Okay, and the lock nut is up on it again. Now what I'll do is I'll put this lock nut on here. And I'll hold the Allen wrench. <laughs> Let's find a good spot here. That's not a very good one. <clears throat> there we go. That's tight. Now we'll just check it once to make sure. That's it. Okay, now we get back to here and we have all this slop still in it. But you want to work it a few times so the balls and ramps and the actuating assembly that are on the other side of the transmission get seated nicely in there. Now Mike's not going to believe how much easier this works. So it's going to be kind of neat. So I can say to him, I told you so, which is my job. But we can watch the lever right now as I extend the cable sleeve right here. You can watch that lever moving. Can you see it moving, Mike? Yeah, okay, because I was going to say you may need to get on this side of it to see it move. You can see the, the gap closing up. Now, the way we used to do this is we would adjust this so that we had right here where the, where the lever goes up against the housing, we would measure that space. Well, Harley's changed that now. And I'm not sure I agree with them because it doesn't always work with a custom cable. Of course, they don't care if it works with a custom cable. That's not their their deal, and I can't say they'll blame them, but ah, they take the measurement right here where the housing meets the bracket. So it's a little bit hard for us to do with this custom cable, which doesn't fit exactly that well. But you can see, if you watch that lever, I'm going to hold it back, and you can watch it close up its space as I 
tighten this thing. See? That's a little bit tighter than I would, well, I think about theirs. Probably pretty good. And then there's that ornamental piece there. Let's see. Yeah, we'll just take that lock nut and move it up there. That's, uh, that's pretty wonderful by my standards. So I'm going to snap it a couple more times. Yeah, Mike's going to show you right there how the clutch is separating. This is our adjustment screw in the middle. This is the lock nut. This big flat piece here is the diaphragm spring. And when you pull that thing, it actually goes over center with that diaphragm spring. That's why the clutch is easier to hold once you get past that spot. But you can see that the clutch is, in fact, releasing. See? Right now I've got the lever held all the way, and the clutch is released. There it is. So I guess the next thing is we're all done there. I can put this, uh, this cover back on this unit here. And like I said, after I do this a couple more times, because I don't think I've had a chance to get at this bike in probably a year that I've done anything on it. But uh, if I do it several more times, it'll all be done. So I think in our next video we'll put the uh, put the primary cover back on and maybe pour some fluid in it and it'll be all done except for putting that rear tire on. Oh, I like the way that feels. That's got a nice feel to it. That ought to get you in trouble. I can see you doing burnouts now. So I got to get back busy because getting some more parts sorted out. So until then, I'll see you out on the road.